<laughs> Mr. Voker, the farmer of Krumnek, has achieved some remarkable results in managing the water on his farm. Despite the farm having received an average annual rainfall of only 105 millimeters over the past five years, Now, besides this, here we've got another 1,000 hectare cleared land. You can see it here from the top. The water is being, when it rains, <coughs> the contours bring the water into a dam. And in the dam, the whole under area, the trees, that is the camel thorn and the good trees, can get stronger and stronger and stronger. Here is that cleared land with the contour bands. And you can see on your right hand side here, there's one contour leading from the point where we're standing yeah. to its the horizont, where it's outflow. Yeah. And you see just another 30 meters down and number two contour, contour yeah. starting here on the upper embankment mm -hmm. leading down to the uh, north west direction uh, the sand here we've got sandy soils i would say with a with a little content of loam it's mostly sand and here the water can penetrate and that is where the trees, the one in front of us, they call it the Watgat tree, those two of them, mm -hmm. how they survive. I see. If you see on the other side, the small shrubs here, they have lost their leaves. They are just battling to get the first drops of moisture. I see. Does it indicate that these shrubs you are seeing which have lost their leaves have got shallow rotting systems? They have got very shallow very shallow. Our country live mostly of it now because of the leaves where there where there is no grass. It's still green and you can see there is life inside mm -hmm. still. The new roots coming up. The old pole is still there. And there's this one will come up just again. Just waiting for the rains. Just waiting for the rains. Uh, you see the big trees and that just behind it you see the earth wall. Uh -huh. yeah. The upper contours are leading in there and the lower contours are leading into the street, which you see lying next to each other here. This is water from the lower contours that run out to this stream. So this is a natural waterway? This is a natural waterway. Mm. In January this year, the water came down, this whole flat had been underwater. Oh. See here the first contour, the water is being held up, can penetrate, and you can see growth. You can also see how all the small trees are still living just thanks to the contour. This is Torak. It's Torak. And it's hard, very hard. And when the water comes down, it's being splashed away and it's being taken, washed away. So hard it is Torak. And the only way is here to open it deep that the water can go in. So in a place like this, 
How frequently would you rip? I would say every meter from a pot. Every meter. Have you already tried some ripping on some parts what of the I farm? What I did here, Mr. Zimmerman, I, I had a, a disc here. But the disc is, hadn't been the answer. Because, okay, it had been moist, the disc rolled over, but over the years it clogged again. So the disc is in this is not ideal. It's better to have a, a, a ripper. Rip it open. For the, the micro roots are visible, so there is life. out into this river bed. The dam where the water is being let in from the that side and these contours here. Okay and I noticed where we passed before the dam well that side that there were actually two buns joining. Correct. So they're both just feeding it in. It yes. just meant that one became suddenly steeper than the other. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. We were lucky to come across a hungry aardvark looking for termites. give you uh, an idea what's happening here, we built terraces in the river, steps, like the steps you walk down here, because the water goes from one point to the other, that the water can't stream right through and make a deep tonga, because if the soil is gone, there is no life. Everywhere where the terrace is, the soil is being caught up and it gets wider. Now the whole secret of the soil is first you've got a concrete ware and behind the concrete ware is sand. Pure sand, river sand. And in the river sand the water is caught up. So you've got no evaporation. Because you've got your ware You've got the sand behind it and underneath the water stays. And that water from the upper part pushes down, 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 down. And this water that is being kept here comes down up to 10, 15 kilometers south of, I can show you here on the, sorry, on the map. <coughs> here is Krumnek. It comes in this whole area. The water comes up again. You won't believe it now because you, you, you can see it only with the eye if I show it to you now. This is the number one is water for the cattle, utilizing the grazing, number one, and number two, to keep the soil from the water. The dam wall was constructed in stages over several decades, one meter at a time. This traps only sand while allowing silt and clay suspended in the water to spill over the wall. This water is being caught up by this concrete going through and the water stays in the sand. The dam walls are constructed at regular height intervals along the riverbed to provide a series of terraces. All this sand having been deposited between the first two terraces of the farm. Daar is een lied, kan jullie zien, daar is een put, een ronde put, en dan die andere is groen. Then eventually, at one of the lower dam walls, the sand has not yet reached the height of the wall, so the water comes to the surface and is then siphoned to continue its way to another dam further downstream where it gets utilized. It's a steam pipe yeah. going through 
Und das wird auch ein Zeichen. Behind the, the tap, I got on the pipe, I got a tap. I close it. Okay. Then I fill the water, the pipe with the water, then I open the tap. Then it sucks it. Okay. So why do you take this water? This water runs now to the house. What is that dam at the house? Okay. Does it stay open? Right. 24 hours. Right. Right. And the water doesn't fill it. Huh? So all these catchments are feeding this one also. Under, underground. Underground. Yeah. That is very much interesting. That water, it's coming out of here. It's got the pipe, steel pipe going up. Yeah. Yeah. Pipe yeah. Yeah. Then we are on the right hand side. Yeah. And it sucks the water out. Yeah. Oh yeah, now we are still running. Yeah, I had even two, two pipes. So I took the, the other one I took away. I'll get only one. Despite it being October, six months after the last rainy season, the water continues to flow. Not sleep as the railway lines, poor stuff. They are drilled by stumper. Uh, machine into the rock, eight foot, and the boar machine took it up, put it in the hole, concreted it, and then we made the bow as the eggshell, and then just connected. Here you use approximately a third of the material that we used in here. If you put so much higher here, you get back plenty of water. From here we lift the water now up to the embankment. There you see a blue pump. And at the back it's got the suction nose and she sucks the water up and bringing the water in the six inch pipeline up 30 meters. And from there it's running. The drinking water comes from the uh, uh, windmills. <coughs> There's a bowl in the earth, and from there it's been pumped up. This one, there's another one too. Then the tank that you see there, in the water, they have got also a bow out. That's why I put the casing over it that the dam water can't infiltrate it, and they have got a submersible, electric submersible pump. We've got one big dam, First, I'll show you above how the water will come in here. You can see the tons and tons <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> of sand being brought down.
down. And that sand is being caught up by the vias. And behind the vias, the, the water is, is being kept. So, and then the water we are storing in one big dam from, this is all under water, at least four kilometers. From here, we let it run slowly down the riverbed up to the house. From the house, we lift it up. Uh, about 30 meters, and then we lead it in an open furrow to uh, approximately 30 hectare. There we've got another dam with a pipeline leading down, and there we've got our beddings that I'll show you now. This is the furrow that leads the water at a gradient of 1 in 400 to the fodder garden. Here we lead the water right to the bottom of that land. In one bedding. Thick, 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 thick. We need to walk down there, I'll show you. Still, we've got me mechanical cutters there also, but the neatest way is by hand. Huh? It gives uh, labor positions filling working places and it's neat. Mm -hmm. With machinery, mm -hmm. small pieces like that, it, it's not successful. Only if it's high like this. Also yeah. uneconomic. Yeah. <coughs> you see, now it's in the bag, you load it, you bring it to the truck. And this is enough for a cow. For one meal. For one? Meal. Yeah. Huh? Because one it's meal. rich, very rich. With this small supplement of green oats, these cows are able to convert the felt grasses into a lot of milk. Shut up. Shut up. 